Okay, so we have put base colours down on most of this now. Um, so we've done our tractor in the blue, um, which is looking very blue right now. Um, the sea and, and various other bits. Um, we've done the um, wheels in the sort of the the dark red. Um, we've got lots to do yet. So my next job is to actually do a dark blue wash for this. So we're going to use, start with using um, the same blue paint. I'm going to add a little bit of black to it. I'm just going to see how that flows first by putting it on some scrap. Yeah, I think that's going to be okay. So rather than starting on the tractor, I'm going to start on the uh, underside of the seat. Uh, and we just want to highlight anywhere where there might be some shadow to start with. I'm just pin washing it. It's subtle, especially when it dries, it'll be subtle. Um, but that's exactly what I'm looking for. Okay, so you get the general idea. Um, it's going to take a little bit of time, so I'm going to crack on with that. So we're simply going to carefully brush paint this. Should just help the uh, metalized color that we're putting on here pop out a bit. First one done, I'll get this other side done and then come back to you. Okay, um, next job is to sort out the um, Lands Bulldog uh, sign at the front. So we want the lettering and the rim there to be brass. So I'm using um, an extra fine sanding pad. I mean, for all, all intents and purposes, it's smooth because we don't want to scratch the uh, brass surface. We just actually want to gently rub the paint away. You see, it's starting to reveal itself. You can see that's really starting to come out now. There we go. Looks nice and authentic, doesn't it? It'll be interesting to see what this looks like when it dries. Right, I'll do the other side, give it a second coat, and then come back to you. But that is tying in nicely with the brass on the front. Lovely. So, um, I've just painted the, most of the exhaust system in burnt iron, which is going to be my base colour. And I also want to use the burnt iron for some dry brushing. I've just started doing that on the floor there. So any con any um, areas where I think we're going to have lots of contact points, I'm just going to dry brush a bit of burnt iron on there. So that's primarily where 
you're going to get some footfall. I'm not too much under that area there because that's where the uh, where the seat's going to go. So there wouldn't be too much under there. So I can imagine some on the edges there. And I can imagine getting on and off, you're going to rub against those uh, hexagon heads there. And a little bit on the various levers. And then we're going to just do a little bit of chipping. Around the towing coupling is a good place. I can imagine that he probably steps onto this to get on and off, so we'll do a little bit around there as well. Okay, that is probably everything we need to do on that. We do have the um, steering wheel and the seat, which I think would get quite a bit. So we'll do that next. Actually finding these um, stippling brushes quite good. They're, uh, they're very easy to use. seat I'm uh, pretty happy with that that's looking pretty authentic I think now the steering wheel would also get a little bit of wear uh, you can imagine that you know resting your hand on the little cross members and things like this cause a little bit of wear but only really on the tops So less is more when it comes to that. So my next step on the exhaust is to sort of stipple over the um, burnt iron colour with rust. So I'm using Vallejo's 71080 rust and I'm just dabbing it on because I don't want it on even. If you can see, I want some of that um, burnt steel to come through. So, and we're going to make up some different layers of colour on this to try and uh, give it a bit of an authentic look. I'm hoping it'll turn out okay. Um, but we will see. There's a little bracket part way down. I want that to remain rust free. Okay, I'm happy that we have started that off in the right direction. So we're now going to add to that rust colour. So I have some rust wash here. Uh, 
I'm going to put a little bit there separately and we're going to put some into the rust paint that we've already got. That should give us some different colours. I'm holding the very tip because that's going to be black and smoky. Let that dry and see how that's getting on. Whilst the exhaust is drying, we can use the rust wash and just go around some of the details on some of these wheels. So, around the castellated nuts, some of the joints there. Let that dry off and see how that looks. Okay, well, we can also take the opportunity to put some rust on the tractor in places where we think we might get it. So I'm going to imagine we might get some around here where there's lots of equipment going in and out all the time. pick out one random nut that's rusty. I don't know why, but I think uh, it always adds to the effect somehow. Underneath where you've got moisture getting trapped, that's where we might get some, uh, some rust starting to show. Okay, again, try not to overdo it. Okay, you saw that I added some rust into the wash. So I still want to try and maintain a metallic look to the exhaust whilst clearly showing that we get heat through there. And we will put some weathering powder on here as well, or pastel or something along those lines I think that will probably do don't want any rust on the chair particularly um, can't think where else we might want some right then I have just popped the decals on um, it doesn't have many there's um, one of these on each side. Got to say the decals are super thin and have behaved really nicely. Uh, there's a little um, information plate there and then some on the inside. You can just about see in there. Um, I've now added also these little tops. Um, they've all been painted in... Uh, where is it? Flat brown, which is 7984, which is what the instructions call for. Um, and I um, think that is it. Now we've got some scratch building yet to do on this, um, but I think we're now in a position where we can um, flat varnish this. Actually, we might do it. We might do it satin um, and then we can have a contrast 
with some of the mats that we put on in the weathering process. So um, I'm going to varnish this up next. Um, and then I will come back to you when we're ready to progress a bit further. And I have now dry brushed it with the same blue and a dash of off-white. And you can see we've got a little bit of highlighting um, as a result. Um, the brass bits have been painted in and these um, uh, tops uh, for various different things have been painted in in the brown. The steering wheel has been painted in rust, which is what the instructions call for. So I guess it was a, a wooden steering wheel. Um, so um, I have some um, little bits of pipe work to create, but they're going to be the last thing I do before we put the wheels on. Um, so um, I want to do a little bit of chipping, a little bit of highlighting, and um, as you will see, I have um, some of my um, AK pencils out. Um, and we're going to start with uh, this light blue one and just do a little bit of highlighting because um, the, the light blue will... Uh, just contrast quite nicely uh, against this dark blue so anything that we want to just um, um, raise up a little bit um, bolt heads that type of thing then we can do that and we're just simply going to gently rub the pencil over it, it it's almost like a dry um, brushing process um, but you can see let's see if we take if you take the bolt, bolt heads around that hub there, which won't be seen when the wheel goes on, we're just going to, just to highlight the point. There you can see an ever so subtle highlighting. Um, so obviously, um, if you've used these pencils before, you know that you can use them wet and dry. There's, there's a whole host of things you can do with them. Um, I've got a round brush here that's quite stubby, a flat brush that's damp, and a flat brush that's dry. So um, depending on what we do with them, we, we could use all of these for, for different, different purposes. So... Um, Anywhere that's going to catch the light, maybe fade a little bit, maybe get a little bit of scuffing, so raise details, that sort of thing. The same sort of areas that you, you might possibly dry brush, I'm just going to highlight. Not all of them, and I'm only doing um, parts of it, just to raise the detail level a little bit. We think it's too much, we just get uh, a damp brush and take it off. less is more. I'm going around with the medium rust and I'm just adding one or two little rust chips and streaks. Again not much but just a little bit. Uh, I'm going to use a wet brush to do some blending with this so uh, you can see I've got the brush wet there and I'm just gonna clean that off. There you go that's clean. Get most of it off so that the brush ends up being damp rather than wet. Um, 
and we can use that to just streak the rust down a little bit. Now, just wetted the end of the brush a little bit, um, and we're going to just put a little bit of rust in using the wet tip. And then use our damp brush just to blend it. So these are areas where I'd expect mud and therefore moisture traps to be, so we could expect to see a little bit of rust forming. And we have a light rust, which we can also apply. See the colour change there. Okay, I want to now do some sort of rain marks, so particularly on the top of the dome of, well, I guess it's an air vent or something. And then I'm going to go over that now moist with a streaking dirt. I'll do the same again with the moist brush. Just blend it in. starting to take shape. I'm going to crack on, you get the idea, um, and I'll show you what it looks like when we're done. Now where we've got this um, big bar that's got all the holes in for hooking up different things, um, I'm just going around with an ordinary pencil, um, an ordinary HB pencil, and just metalising those, those holes and putting some scratches and chips on. Um, it just adds to the effect of it being a, a piece of metal. I mean this is the probably the most worn piece on the whole tractor and we can do it the same over the uh, area here where we put the uh, towing hook. get high traffic and there we go just has a nice metallic shine okay I want to now just sort of get a darker shade underneath which sort of represents a, a bit of collected dirt and, and mud and grime and stuff uh, and I'm using the earth brown pencil and what we're doing is we're dipping it in the water getting it wet and we're just drawing over, not all of it, but just certain areas. And then using a brush that's damp, we're just blending that in and getting it into the areas that we want it to collect in. It allows us to move it around 
Um, and if we don't like it, we don't like what we're doing, we can get the brush wet again and we can take it off and move it around till our heart's content. But you're basically making sort of a wash, which allows us to get it into all the nooks and crannies. I don't want it to be heavily covered in mud. I just want it to seem a little bit grimy, which would be, you know, realistic that it'd have a level of crime on it. Um, now this will dry quite matte, so uh, it will give us a nice contrast against the um, satin that we've done as the, the the varnish finish. So I'm going to get on with that and come back to you when that's done. Just using um, enamel Humbrol 56 um, as a first coat of um, paint, and we're just dry brushing it on, and then we're going to put a steel on afterwards, um, which will be a brighter colour, and that should give us two different shades of um, metal wear through the paint of the of the steel wheels, so which I'm hoping will look quite nice. So we can just pick out the colours. Um, all the raised areas and we should get some nice contrast in doing that. You can see I've done this front wheel already and then when we go around with a brighter colour hopefully that'll look um, about right. Okay time for some uh, weathering powders. Um, I'm going to use um, a dark earth colour but I don't want it as dark as that, so we're going to mix a little bit of white in there. Um, so generally, when I'm doing that, I'll put the white in first um, and make it um, darker from there. So a little bit of white, and then. We'll go in and put some dark earth in. Don't want to contaminate, so I'm just getting rid of me powder. Now normally you would um, mix this with a varnish of some type but I'm actually going to uh, mix it with decal fix because I can then go around with decal fix and reactivate it once it's dried and always remove it if I put too much on I don't like where it's dried or don't like the end effect I can remove it if I use decal fix whereas if you use a varnish it, it's permanent. Okay, and what we can do is just put it on in the areas where we want some collected grime. And then we can get straight in and just wipe that off. So I'll crack on with that and show you what that looks like in a minute. Okay, having dry brushed the wheels in 
enamel 56 from Humbrol, uh, which has give, given us um, a sort of a, a dark aluminium type colour. We're now going to paint in the uh, steel using this MIG colour, which is quite a bright steel colour. Um, and we're going to sort of um, dry brush that as well on, on these raised points. I just want to go and paint the rim in first. That would be almost completely silver, if not completely silver, I would imagine. Okay, that's looking good. It's got two different shades of silver on it. We'll just let that dry. Okay, let's have a look at dry brushing this now. I just want to highlight the very tops. That should do. Um, we've got an opportunity now to um, do any dry brushing that you might want to do uh, with the steel on any other part of it. And for me, that is just the tops of the uh, little handles here. Want to show a little bit of worn away paint there. Okay, right, so our next task is to get the um, brass wires onto the tractor so we can put the wheels on. So I'm going to use some 0.2 lead wire um, to sort out the cabling that we need to add. There's some pipe work that we need to add so we need to put it just going to try and improve the light a little. We need to put it and just find something to point with Need to put the cabling from these two points here and here onto here um, and onto here, and then that's all got to be painted in brass. The beauty of lead wire, of course, is it's very easy to manipulate. Uh, what is less easy is to manipulate it on camera, but we will have a go. So, point two lead wire. Um, and my first piece of lead wire needs to go from that point to 
that point there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to form it first and then we'll trim it. That's sort of my thought process. So it needs to come down like that. Actually needs to be maybe a little longer than that. Right, so I'm going to cut that. So I'll make it flat to start with by pressing it to the mat. And then we want to make a nice gentle bend there. So I'm just going to form it. I'm not sure I can do that on camera. Give me a sec. Okay, I have formed a piece of wire and I've just dipped it in both ends into some medium CA Right, that's our first piece on. Now our next piece is going from there to there. And then we've got a piece going from there over to there. Oh, no, I beg your pardon. It's going from the top of that over to there. So my off cut's too short, so I'm going to put that back in the bag so we don't lose it. So, let's just get an idea of the length we need. So from there, down to there. So that's that piece. That have to go on last because the other one goes underneath it. And that is going from there put that back there. Hopefully that one's long enough.
move it. Hopefully we didn't cut that too short there. It's really tricky with the camera. Right where I want to put my hand. Right, let's get some glue on that. Okay, attempt two. I'm sure that five second grab isn't working. I'm sure that was longer than five seconds. Okay, it is on. Let's have a look at this last one now. So that is going on the top of there. So it needs a little kink in it. Right, I think. It's going to be easier to glue that in on one end and then manipulate it once that's stuck on. So that's what we're going to do. Give that a second to dry and then we'll try and shape it how we want it. Okay. Apologies for my hand, I'm going to do my best. Okay, so we've just got to paint all that brass now and get the exhaust on. We do have a little photo etch bracket to put on here. We'll let that dry on first. So we are done. Let's just recap on what we've done to get the uh, tractor, um, or what I believe is actually a rotivator. Um, the steel wheel version, I think, was called a rotivator. Um, but let's have a look at what we've done to get us where we are. So the main body is painted in Vallejo 71266 dark blue, uh, RLM 24 which is the colour that the instructions call out. The uh, wheels have been done in um, a Panzer um, dark red-brown, basically uh, the primer colour for um, German tanks. Uh, and that was the closest colour I had to what they were calling out for. It's possibly not quite got the, the red hues that... Um, we were looking for but the colour that they out actually shouted out um, uh, that I had in the Tamiya range was uh, almost almost brown um, so this is actually um, redder than than what I would have put down if I'd followed the instructions um, then the wheels have been given a dry brush in uh, Humbrol 
enamel 56, which is like a, an aluminium colour. Uh, and then the um, I've gone over that again with um, uh, MIG metal um, acrylics at steel, which gives us that sort of um, worn look um, where the paint's been scuffed off, where the vehicle's been in use. And uh, what we've not done is cover it in mud and stuff like that, as you might expect a tractor to be in. This is very much a sort of washed down tractor, if you like. Um, then we've used um, the MIG metal uh, brass on the brass components there. Uh, we've picked out this little lever here in red. Um, and then the cabling has been put in with 0 0.02 millimeter lead wire. Um, on the front here, we cut the uh, top of the um, pin, uh, the, the towing pin off um, so that we could reposition it, which just makes it look a little bit more lifelike in, in my view. Uh, and then the um, bulldog sign, um, once you've painted it, you just go over it with something smooth to skim the paint off, leaving behind you, your photo etch underneath. Don't forget to seal it though, because um, it will tarnish over time. Um, Okay, the uh, exhaust, let's just move that into view, uh, that was painted um, burnt iron um, and then um, some uh, rust colours, um, it's been dry brushed, um, sorry, it's been, had some uh, rust weathering powder added to it um, and then some black weathering powder has been applied to the top. Um, the bracket, now that's that's interesting. Um, in fact, let's show you the instructions for the bracket. So you can see here that uh, I've not attached the bracket as per the instructions. I was really struggling with it. I think the photo etch was slightly oversized or um, my exhaust stack is maybe slightly in the wrong place. I, I don't think so because it fits at the bottom and it's all squarely on, on straight as it should be. Um, so I've slightly modified mine to to make it fit. Um, the cover of the um, belts and bits and pieces, uh, we've given that, like the rest of the model, a bit of a dry brush in uh, the same blue with a little bit of white added and that's what gives us our faded little scratch look there along the top. Um, and we also went round with an AK pencil, and um, pale blue pencil and did a little bit of highlighting as well. Um, and then just to make it look a little bit grubby we've gone round with some uh, black pastel uh, and just lightly dabbed that on in places and that's what's given us our, our darkness around some of these panels here and um, just done down the, the white so it's not quite so stark on the decals for example um, and then where we want it there, a little bit faded on the top of, of this dome here um, we've gone round with a little bit of white weathering powder, just giving it a dab and then brushed it off. And that's just, uh, and you can see we've done that a little bit on these top panels as well. Um, then the um, chair, in addition to everything else that we've talked about, has also had um, a dry brush in steel and gone round with a graphite pencil. And that's worked really quite nicely. Um, and then the towing bar, let's get that into view. The towing bar, um, everything that we have done to the whole tractor, we've done to the towing bar. So it's been painted, um, it's been dry brushed in a lighter colour. It's had um, the, the blue with a little bit of black added, was used as a wash in various places, including around these fasteners here and underneath. Um, it's then had um, chipping from the light um, AK pencil, so you can see that in these areas here and highlighting the, the tops of the uh, of the uh, fasteners head. We've been round with the chipping colour of the AK pencil, 
it's been dry brushed in aluminium, it's been dry brushed in steel, we've been round with uh, an HB pencil and given it a rub and then all these holes where um, equipment would have been attached or what have you, we we put um, graphite pencil in all of those. So we absolutely went to town on that and um, I, I think the result is pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. Um, if you remember, we replaced these um, hex bolts that were moulded slightly distortedly, so we took them off and replaced those with, with our own hex bolts, um, and we replaced the uh, towing uh, pin here with a bit of bent brass wire, uh, which I think gives it a nice realistic look. Um, and other than that, uh, it's just all absolutely as per the kit. So I'll take some photographs and um, leave you with a little gallery.